Welcome back to Adri's Homestead Life. Today we are in a garden. So this is the first job this year where we have a full vlog in a garden. It's a bit windy, so I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, I'm going to plant out the Vitanoa Beam purple first early potatoes. So what I'm gonna do, I've just raked through this area because this is the patch we are going to put the potatoes and I'm struggling with this flower. I need some tall because it's got deep root. I, I try to show you what it is. I'm not sure if it's a buttercup, but has got this yellow flower and the leaf looks like this. And it's literally my garden. It's full of it. I have not planted this. I don't know what this is, but yeah, I am really struggling to remove it. So I'm gonna go through again with my little tool and that little plastic pocket. And I'll try to just loosen up the soil and remove as much as I can before we plant the potatoes. And then I'm going to get some homemade compost. We're probably gonna need a couple of wheelbarrow full. And after that, uh, yesterday I have weeded these big hoops, raised beds, and we are going to put the shallots. And also over here, by the way, look how beautifully the tulips now opened. So over here, I'm gonna make a row or a couple of rows, possibly two rows or three. I'm not sure how many broad beans I've got and we're gonna plant the broad beans out. So if you're interested how to plant potatoes, shallots out to the garden in March and the broad beans, you are welcome to my garden. I have removed some of those plants and I'm just raking it through before we make the drenches and we go and grab the compost. Just brought the first wheelbarrow full. It's really heavy because it's so wet of compost. It's very very moist some places are wet but we have to we have to plant the first early potatoes out but now so we can't wait any longer so this is all this is all the white noir beam i have in here the first early potato i've got 30 potato seeds i saved these ones one, two, three, four, five, six of my from last year, homegrown. And this is from the shop, the rest. So what I'm gonna do, the larger ones will go on their own. And as you can see at the minute, they've got beautiful chits on them. I'm probably gonna remove a few. So I leave two, I leave two the best ones. So I'm going to remove the rest, because otherwise they will send all these shoots up. So I'll leave these two and I'm going to plant the potatoes like this. So because from here that will grow the beautiful foliage. So I'm going to do that first. And I think I was thinking whether I have rows, lots of small rows like this or long rows like that. But I think I'm going to have long rows. And I'm going to have one, two, three rows, one of the, my homegrown potatoes, so it's going to be one, and then the rest, the two rows, going to be from the shop board. So, what I'm going to do, 
I'm just gonna start probably here. And I'm just gonna make a little hole like this. And that's where I'm gonna put the potatoes. So let's see. Because this is the first early, I don't really need to leave a huge space between the potato, potatoes, because we will be harvesting these probably June, July time. I grow potatoes for the whole year, for the past five years. So, yeah, I've not, I've not bought potatoes for about five years and it works for me really well. So I'm, plan I'm planning to do the same again this year. So grow whole year worth of potatoes. I've still got, I don't know for how many kilo, but I've still got quite a bit, bit left in the annex. That last will last me until these first early potatoes so will probably last me till June time so March April May June for for the next three months I've still got potatoes so yeah that's really good Maybe something like this I usually leave like 30 centimeter between the potatoes and 60 centimeter between the rows but because this is the first early I'll plant these a little bit closer oh I've got so many worms so I'm gonna do this row the closest to the fence to the house with my homegrown from last year so I remove the chits what I don't want I leave two and I'm standing it up like this these potatoes now been chitting for a while so they've got beautiful chits on them and now we need to be very gentle when we cover this make sure we don't knock those chits off so Yeah. Now I'm just going to put some homemade compost around it and cover it back up with some of the older compost be very gentle not to knock those chits off sound like this. I don't want to cover it too much. It's like a little, like little molehill. And then when that comes up, we'll cover it with more homemade compost and with more compost. So we mound it up quite big. Do the same to the rest. I'll get some. Put this back up. Just like that. So mound it around it so I kind of know where it is. You know, just like that. Potato is actually my second most favorite vegetables to grow after the tomatoes. Tomato is my favorite and potato is my second favorite. I love harvesting potatoes.
Oh, I'm not sure if you can see all these worms. Sorry, wormies. You're doing a great job. On the next row. So roughly, we go in about 50 centimeter next to the other one. Small hole. We don't need a big one. And we have six again. And we use shop both next. And if it's a smaller size, we still leave two chips on, but a foot pot, two small potatoes. And if it's a larger one, leave two chips on and put one. See how wet it is. I've never had, I've never planted potatoes in really damp, wet, moist, this wet soil before. So, one, two, three, four, five, one more. Okay. So, okay. The potatoes. Again, put all the rest of the chits off. We don't need all. What do you think, sand? And just stand it in a hole like that. Twenty fourth of March today. It's Sunday. I'm just carry on doing all this until I finish planting all the first early potatoes. So the third row of six, I've just put two seed potatoes each because they are small and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six small sweet potatoes, not sweet potatoes, <laughs> potatoes left. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make another three hole towards that way. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do to use all this stuff. So these are actually really tiny, so I'm going to put two each, standing like that next to each other. I've got one chip each on it. Oh, I can hear it, she's barking somewhere. I cannot believe how beautiful the weather has turned out. So it's about 2 p.m. in the afternoon and I've done all the potatoes. So now, now we've finished, we've got three, three rows of seven potato plants. So we've got seven in each row and we've got three rows. 
And now I've got my shallots out. So this shallot, I grew this last year. I've saved some seed shallot. It's a type of onion. When, if you don't know what shallot is, it, it's, a, it's an onion family. And you plant one onion bulb and give you a handful. So it's ace. I love it. Also delicious. So you can pickle it, you can cook with it, fry, caramelize, anything. And I've got an idea again. I just need to be careful now. I'm just actually noticed that gladiola is coming up and I'm trodden all over it. Um, I might do two rows of these shallots on the side of the potatoes. So I might do like a, like a half a frame in L, letter L. So we go like this all around it in an L. And I leave this uh, snapdragon, survive the winter. So that will probably when start flowering, it's gonna be beautiful. So we're gonna have two rows of shallots, one long, one short row, three rows of potatoes. And it's gonna look amazing. And my beautiful tulips will out soon. This is a beautiful tulip over there, actually. And I've got some daffodils and that lupin in the end, I planted that last year, looking good. Can you see this, what I'm doing here? Yeah, you can. These are uh, already gone to seed. I need to harvest the sorrel. So I'm just taking these off now while we're here. Actually, I'm gonna take this to the chickens. They'll love it. Right, so let's, let's plant out the shallots. Right, let's do this. Probably leave about, I don't know, about 10 centimeters apart. These are quite small. I will top it up probably later on, in a minute, with some homemade compost. Just put this on there, shallot, we probably will know. Developed a very good root system. I'll show you in a minute. And they are the small ones. Look, that was like literally a tiny bulb. It's a very nice, healthy root system, but it's getting it's time to plant out now. Picking up. Sometimes I use string if I really want like a perfect straight line. I'm not forced to be honest. As long as it's in, I'll do for me. Well, definitely don't need to water, that's for sure. Oh dear God, 
Right. I loosen up that root a bit. Oh, it smells gorgeous. Really smells good. There's so many worms in here. It feels so good finally doing something in a garden. I'll grab one, two, three more. And that's it. Just loosen this root a bit. And firm it in. Just gently. Although it's show frost, we just we had one degree. Didn't go quite to frost luckily. But we've not we've not out of the weather yet. But the shallot should be okay with such a frost. And then because the soil is now warmed up, I'm happy the potatoes it's okay in there now as well. So this part of the garden, it's done, this little far right-hand corner. We've got the first early potatoes and the shallots planted, it's done. If I turn you up there, that cherry blossom, it's getting so close. I can see actually quite a few already open. But the next few days, I show you how beautiful this will be. Okay, I'm on the next job, next mission. Still doing the shallots. Over here, just seen a couple of woodpeckers, some onions. Inside the raised beds are the elephant garlic. And I've got this empty patches here, and I have decided to put the shallots here. If you're here with me for a while, you know I'm not really good sticking to my plan because, to be honest, I haven't even looked up what, what I <laughs> had planned to put in here. I've just remembered about the plan, to be honest. So yeah, now it's gonna be shallots here. Probably I said something, maybe celery or lettuce, I can't remember. But yeah, we're gonna plant the shallots over here and Probably we just fill out these gaps if we've got some leftovers. Absolutely love listening to birds. I'm just thinking about uh, all these spots will be handy in a minute and we're gonna do, well not in a minute, probably tomorrow and we're gonna pot on the tomatoes This root system is from flushes celery Root. So 
our way now. I'm pulling up these roots and like millions of worms coming up with it. Sorry wormies. Whoa. I've not seen that before. That's amazing. Okay. behind me there is still the purple sprouting broccoli doing fantastic we've got time later on we can harvest some look how beautiful these tulips are I thought I stretched my leg and I'm on my way to have a look at the bees how busy they are on this beautiful sunny day. Can you see that apricot? I've got one. Few in here, quite a few. Tiny. One, two, three, four. This one, five, six, seven. Now that middle hive, it's busy. And this one, the fourth one. excited about the walnut as long as they still green that's still good if the frost come they'll turn brown but at the moment I can see millions this raised bed needs an attention well all the shallots I planted so I've got all along here till the middle and I've put a few within the onions as well. Let's do let's go do the broad beans. Right. I've just weeded through this little area and I'll show you where did I put the state of my uh, broad beans? This is the oh dear state, right? This is not good. Leggy falling all over the place. Broad beans. This is the variety. Autumn light. So what I am now trying to save these. So I've got these little fans. But I've not, I'm not using this for nothing this year. So I'm going to try to put two narrow rows and plant the broad beans in between so it holds it in place. Well, well that's the plan. We're just going to have to wait and see how this goes, to be honest, because I've got no other idea at the minute. Hmm, so I'll just go, I'm just going to do one row first, plant the broad beans and then put them on the other side. Let's see if this works or not. Then we need to cover it as well with the wire mesh and the hoop. So, I've left it too long friends. And that's when things come complicated. But we've got to work what we've got. And I've got another tray like that as well. 
Oh, there is another thing we can uh, experiment with this now. Let's see if I can take one out. Oh, wow. Look at this root system. This is my new planter that we're just experimenting with. So, take this apart somehow. Actually, it looks, it works really well. If we would have done this a week ago, that would have been a perfect scenario. That root system is lovely. Oh, wow. Take all four out, like that. And then plant them in. I think I really like the planter. Make a drench all along this fence. And hide them deep in. Okay. I'll probably do about fifteen centimeter apart, fifteen twenty. I'll try to stick to it. And have a look. This one's only got three. One, one not germinated. That's the one it did. Oh, actually, something's going on in there. It's got a root. Just didn't come up yet. Oh wow! I love it. How about this one there? I'll pop it in. Just here in the middle, let's see what's happened. I'll do. Okay. Cover it back up. And friends, I'm just gonna, that's gonna take me, keep me busy. Okay, so I've got, you can see the idea. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. If these broad beans, I put them really close together because to be honest, I'm not sure if all gonna survive. So even if every second or third survives, that's good. And uh, this is the little system I came up with because they are so laggy, so they, otherwise they would just be on that ground straight away with a little bit of wind. So, I'm just taking these module trays apart. I'm very impressed with it. I've already got a few ideas I would like to do with these module trays. You can use this up straight away to do some more experiment. And the other half's got a coriander in there, so that needs putting on soon. So I'm doing basically the same. I'm gonna do inside in these, like that.
have got a, quite a little, good little system going in here now. I've decided to do like a hole, put it in and cover it up, firm it in. I'm gonna put the environment over it as well. I use these pegs to secure the envire mesh. I like to put a few on the top and a few right in the bottom. Okay, job is done. I have managed to do all three jobs I have planned for today. So this is the broad beans, the potatoes and the shallots. It was... I picked the perfect day. I couldn't pick a better day. Look at this blue sky. It's gorgeous. In t-shirts. Feels like summer. I can't believe it. The weather we had, you know, yesterday, the hail and the close to the frost and all that rain and I've managed to do it felt like I don't know so so, so lovely feeling when you can finally start properly working in your garden so it's not just a conservatory or just you know hiding in windowsill plants seeds but it's a proper job done outside so we've done the first early white on our beam all the shallots and the broad beans, the autumn, what's it called? Autumn, autumn light, the broad bean variety. I just wanted to be sure, make sure I've got it right. So thank you so much for spending time with me in my garden and see you very soon. Bye friends. Friends, this bread we've just made, it smells amazing. And look how pretty it is.